In this video I'm going to talk about how to use a multimeter, which is an essential skill. So the first thing to do is to actually be able to turn it on. So with this one here I just press the red button, the display comes on. There are other types of multimeters, like this little green one here, where the on-off switch is actually the dial. So you have to rotate it to wherever you want it to be to turn it on. And remember to rotate it to turn it off. This multimeter will turn itself off after a minute or two. So if it's gone off and you expect it to be on, like a Windows computer, just turn it off, turn it back on again, and it will come back to life. Now I'm going to start off by measuring voltage, and I've constructed a very simple little battery and bulb circuit, which I've drawn out here, and I'm going to measure the voltage, which I've indicated with this voltmeter across this bulb here. The first thing I do before I plug anything in is select the voltage range that I want to measure. So if I've got this voltmeter here, just to show you, this symbol here means DC voltage, and I've got a choice of 1000, 200, 20, 2, or 200M. And those are all voltage ranges, so choices, choices, what should I do? I'm going to start with 1000 and explain what they do in just a moment. So having selected my voltage range, and once it's selected, and only once it's selected, I'm actually going to plug my multimeter in. A black wire always goes into the common connection, and another wire, usually red, but it doesn't have to be, goes into what I want to measure. In this case I'm measuring voltage, so I plug it into one with V in it, like that. I take the two ends of my wire and I connect them in parallel, like that. And what I should see is that I'm measuring a voltage. And now we can start to talk about what the scales mean. This is first of all telling me that I've got a high voltage selection, so be careful. And secondly, it's giving me a really, really bad reading. Maybe one, maybe two volts. That's not really very satisfactory. What this thousand means, what this thousand means just here is that it will read up to, but not including, a thousand volts. Okay, and this one means it will read up to, but not including 200 volts. And this one means it will read up to, but not including 20 volts. So as the scale goes up, the resolution of the meter gets better. So I'm going to switch it to the 200 range, and now it reads 2.0 volts, that's better. I'm going to switch it to the 20 range, and it reads 2.01 volts, that's an even better result. I should be able to get even more detail, switch it to the 2, and I've got this symbol here. Now this symbol here means that the, what I'm trying to measure is greater than what I've selected here. So I've selected up to and including two, up to but not including two volts, and I'm reading more than two volts. So that symbol one means that I'm out of range. Switch back down, and there I have 2.01 volts. So that's now measuring the voltage, and the symbol for DC is that symbol. So I've measured DC voltage, and we've looked at over range. Well, if you notice on my circuit, if I just take this to pieces again, if you notice on my circuit diagram here. I've also got an ammeter, and this is a multimeter, so it should be able to measure current. So I'm going to disconnect it before I actually change the range, and then once I've disconnected it, I'm going to switch it over to measuring current. Now this is particularly important for the ammeter, because the ammeter has a fuse in it. And when I switch around to here, like this, what I'm saying is I'm going to measure up to a maximum of 200M, which we'll talk about in a moment, or up to a maximum of 2 amps with this one here. But what happens is, it says down here, this is 2 amps max, and it says fused. So there's a fuse between these terminals. And if you just switch it randomly, then you'll probably end up blowing the fuse because you'll connect it in parallel with a battery or something. So I'm going to move my connection. So I've set the multimeter to be measuring current. I'm going to switch the 2 amp range because that's the biggest that I've got. I'm going to put it into the amp setting, like this. And then I'm going to work out how to connect it into the circuit. Now, an ammeter has to actually physically break the circuit. Here it is. It's in the circuit. So I need to unplug my circuit, plug my ammeter connection into there, make sure that doesn't touch anything, plug the other side of my ammeter connection into there, and now you'll see that I've got 0.206 amps. 0.206 amps. So what that means is that I've... I can't go down to the 200M. Let's have a look and see what happens when I do. It's gone out of range. So what does the M actually mean? The little M on this scale, reading just here, this little M. Well, that means milli. It means it's reading up to, but not including 200 milliamps. 
and when it displays the number on the screen that number is in milliamps so let's demonstrate that I'll turn the voltage down a bit and now you'll see we've got 0.167 amps that's 167 milliamps so if I switch to the 200 range you'll see it's now reading 164.6 milliamps it's not reading in amps anymore it's reading in milliamps you'll also notice that those two numbers aren't the same 165 effectively 168 and that's because each different scale on the multimeter has a slightly different resistance so just be careful when you're measuring um, current you might not get consistent readings if I go to 20 that's reading a maximum of 20 milliamps and I've got out of range again if I go to 2 I don't get as good a reading as if I'm on the 200M so always choose the range which gives you the best reading right moving on if I rebuild my circuit take my multimeter back out of the circuit plug my ball back in okay how would I actually be able to um, measure the resistance of this bulb. Well, what I've done so far, I've measured the voltage and I've measured the current, so I could measure the resistance if I knew the formula. But the multimeter can actually measure the resistance for me directly. So to do this, I turn it to the resistance setting, which on this multimeter is this setting across the top here. Okay, and I'm going to turn it to the, well, I've got a choice of 200 ohms, 2K, which is 2,000 ohms, 20, 200K, which is 200,000 ohms, 2M, which is 2 mega ohms, 20M or 200M. So I'm just going to start at the highest setting to see what happens. So I'll turn my multimeter to measure 200M. Now, when you measure resistance of a component, it can't be in a circuit. You have to actually physically disconnect it. So now that my component is disconnected and it's not part of any circuit, I can plug my multimeter in. But before I do that, I've got to check I've got the right settings. Let's just have a closer look at those. I'll always have a wire plugged into common. If I want to measure current, I use this one because it's got an A on it. If I want to measure voltage or resistance, I measure this one because it's got a V and an ohm symbol next to it. So actually, what I need to do is move my wire across first. Notice that I'm moving my wire with the multimeter disconnected. Plug it in to measure resistance, and it's measuring 0.9. That's not a very good reading. I've got all these decimal places not being used. So if I go down the scale... I don't know why the 200M was reading 0.9, that was a mistake, because what you should find is that the resistance of the bulb is very small, just 1 or 2 ohms. So on my 2K setting, it's now reading 0.001K, 1 ohm. On my 200 ohm setting, it's reading 1.5 ohms. I have no idea what was going on with the first setting. So once again, you've got to choose the correct scale. So here's the 200 ohm setting, reading a maximum of 199 ohms, effectively, 1.4 ohms. There's a setting just here, partway between the resistance scale and the current scale, which has got a diode symbol next to it, that's a continuity tester. If I disconnect my multimeter, it's actually part of the resistance scale, because it's measuring resistance, but this time it's measuring continuity. And now you'll see it's out of range, because the resistance is infinite. If I touch my connections together, it gives me a resistance reading of zero, because they're two perfectly good pieces of wire, and you can hear a tone which says that the circuit is continuous. It has a very low resistance. This is useful for testing things like fuses out of a household plug. So if I put a wire each side, oops, dropped it. And there you go. So now I can tell that's making a continuous connection. So that's a good fuse. So I can put that back in my plug with some confidence. Let's have a look at the other multimeter because it's very slightly different. So I'll rebuild my circuit again. And I'm going to go back to measuring this circuit in its entirety. I'm going to measure current, and I'm going to measure voltage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully use this one here to measure my current. Put the red into there. Now, I'm about to make a horrendous mistake here, because what's going to happen is I'm going to plug it in and my circuit's not going to work. And you think, oh my goodness, my multimeter is broken. What can I do to fix this? But actually it's not broken, because what I've done is I've used the wrong, wrong plugs down here. The voltmeter and the ohmmeter have a very, very high resistance. I've effectively put an infinite resistance in series with my circuit. So I have to unplug my multimeter, change my connections around, 
to measure ammeter, reset my multimeter to measure current, and then plug it back in again. So that was an example of how you can fall foul of just simply plugging the multimeter in to do something different without thinking about it. If you don't have these connections just here correct, and you don't have this scale setting correct, you won't be measuring anything. Now, what we want to do is we want to see if we can actually measure the voltage as well. And I'm going to use this little green voltmeter here. And I'm just going to measure the voltage across a single bulb. I'm going to take this bulb out of the circuit. And I'm just going to wire that one up here. And I'm going to measure the voltage across just a single bulb this time. Okay, so it's not quite the same circuit. So with this multimeter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick look at it. There's the common. There's the V symbol. So this is going to be my voltage. And round here is the DC voltage symbol. So I'm going to turn it to 20. I'm going to guess that 20 will be a good starting point. Notice that's a guess there. That's an educated guess. I'm going to plug a wire into my common, a wire into my voltage. Notice I set the multimeter before I plug the wires in. And now I'm going to plug it in, in parallel. And there it is. It's measuring my voltage across my bulb. Okay, my current's gone wrong. There we go. So now I've got... 0.238 amps, I've got 2.64 volts. There's one more thing to point out about these, these meters, which you can find, quite often find on domestic meters. It's got a hold button, so if I want to read that reading, I can hold it like that. The problem is, and there's an H there, the problem is if you don't notice that's being pressed down, then you'll find all sorts of strange things going on. Watch what happens when I increase the voltage, and actually I'll decrease the voltage. Watch what happens when I decrease the voltage. My current's changed but my voltage hasn't. Just watch that again. So that's 0.24 amps. Gone down to 0.167 amps, but my voltage didn't change. I can't believe the voltage stayed the same. With the hold button pressed down, my voltage doesn't change. So I release the hold button and my voltage goes to what it should be, 1.32. So on these meters, there's two, on these meters here, there's two things to remember. A, the hold button can cause all sorts of havoc and B, if you don't turn it off before when you're finished, you'll find you've got very flat batteries very quickly. Right, let's have a look at one more thing. We'll put that one well out the way. We'll take our circuit and we'll rebuild it as we had before. We'll put that one in there. We'll put the black wire in there. We'll take the blue wire out of here and put it back in here and this little bulb here is probably feeling a bit left out because we haven't measured its voltage yet so let's try and measure the voltage across that bulb and I'm going to look at my multimeter again here it is and I'm going to notice there's another voltage setting down here now this voltage setting seems to have a V in it so that should be fine so what I'm going to do this time is use the 20 volt setting on this one so I'm going to set this ammeter up plug it into the voltmeter Turn it round to the 20V, and I'm going to measure my voltage again. And what I find is it reads zero. Now it's clearly not zero because the bulb's lit, and the reason it's zero is because it's measuring AC voltage. This is the symbol for AC voltage, and these are batteries. The AC component is zero; it's not changing. So you have to be careful when you want to measure voltage to measure DC voltage, not AC voltage. So I'm going to unplug it to change scales. Put it to the 20 setting, plug it back in, and hey presto, it works. So I would encourage you to learn to use a multimeter fluently and well because it is worth it's a worthwhile skill.